eyes don't look at explosions They blow things up and then walk away Who's got time to watch an explosion? There's cool guy errands that they have to walk to Keep walking, keep shining Don't look back, keep on walking Keep strutting, slow motion The more you ignore it, the cooler you look we go back to the question of managing the engineers of the social imaginary. I mean, the, the Hollywood movies don't help because they give it for granted that there will be an apocalypse and some people will survive. And it's usually white men with a, with a gun and a dog. Now underway. About two or three meteors just impacted. Oh my God. Just look at them. I've look, I look at these movies on planes all the time. It's always the same. Um, looking for a white chick. Let's start off with the notion of ideals. And um, this is nothing to do with ideals. This is about the destruction of planet Earth, okay? So uh, you probably saw, and I'm sure your students saw the report that came out just last week from WWF about wildlife destruction, okay? So we've managed to destroy 60% of the world's wildlife since I was born. Um, it's not idealistic to stop that happening. It's necessary to stop that happening. And it's ethically and morally correct to stop that happening. So we can have a lot of arguments about how we can do it, and that's all good. Um, but it's nothing to do with ideals, this. It's actually, a, it's, it's like a triage. It's about preventing the mass death of life on Earth. Here's a fact. Um, extinction levels are currently between 100 and 1,000 times higher than they would normally be, uh, uh, and higher than they were before human civilization. If we were, in the next 50 years, to stop everything that was causing those extinction levels to rise and get back to the normal background level of extinction, it would take up to 5 million years for the natural world to recover from what we've done to it over the last few hundred. So that's where we are. So I don't think it's idealistic to want to stop that happening. not as a homogeneous entity, but as a heterogeneous assemblage of nomadic transversal subjects need to gang together, get together to discuss what kind of mutations we can manage, what kind of humans we want to become. It is really up to the collectivity, to the community, to decide how we strike a path between the sea of garbage and the brand new world of the new technology. This is a choice. Are you for the world? Or against it? It's time to decide. Join the fight for your world with WWF. Hey, hola. Aquí tiene el desayuno verde. Quiero huevos verde. Y con comida toda la comida. ¿Por qué? ¿Qué hacen? Cuando son pequeños hay riesgo que se mueren.
I think there is a serious underestimation of hunger in the world. Because what you're looking at worldwide is an assault on smallholder farming by large corporate agribusinesses. The thing to bear in mind is that lots of different paths were taken. So we're talking from a particular culture, kind of industrial culture, which really sprang out of Europe and North America. And that was one path that was taken. But, you know, there were other paths taken. There are still people living on the Andaman Islands at the moment, which is in the news, who have been practicing the same culture for 30,000 years. Um, there are people in New Guinea, where I've spent time in the past, who until really the mid 20th century were were living in a culture that had been going for at least 10,000 years. Famously, the Australian Aboriginal people have, you know, really been going for 50, 60,000 years. The Bush people of the Kalahari practiced the same culture, as far as we can tell archaeologically, for around 100,000 years mm -hmm. until the 19th century. So all sorts of different paths were taken. Many, many paths were taken. But the problem is that uh, a powerful society that's armed with high technology and weapons uh, tends to wipe out anything else it finds, which is what we've done and what many other cultures in the past have done. So lots of different paths were taken, but the path, the people who choose the path of high technology and power usually end up winning. Uh, of course, what happens when we deposit the ammunition the, the, in the nature, also then for uh, fish, uh, plants or whatever that might then uh, go back up in the food chain and, and uh, eventually come to human again. So, so it's all about the total ecology really. Uh, we, the First Nation people, we are the engineers of survival. Um, and we have survived colonialism, the decimation of our people, the devastation of our land. Now, you're worried about your survival, your little pale-faced people out there, talk to us. And, and it's, very, it's a very difficult set of conversations, but I, I work with people in Australia and in British Columbia on this because I think it's a very important conversation. I saw these holes in here, and I had assumed they had used some kind of a Love drill. Chris just explained to me that this is all done by hand and this chisel right here. And he's actually going to make a hole here so we see how the holes are made. Yeah, yeah, like this, huh? I thought they were all drilled out. There. Isn't that something? Jeez, he's as fast as if you had a drill to do it. Amazing, amazing. You know, the machine and the man. Yeah. Uh, have different. The machine is a perfect circle. Yeah. And the man maybe may make perfect or not perfect circle yes. because the bamboo is not a perfect circle right so exactly must, so, the, uh, but, uh, so the, the man is uh, must, uh, most perfect for the machine because, i understand yeah, yeah, yeah i understand you fit it exactly like your because bamboo, bamboo. again this this is this is a good exercise for everybody to do to to Think about what stories you think have been told that you grew up with that weren't true, and then think about which stories might be true instead. Um, and, and the whole Dark Mountain project starts off from this principle that everything is a story, which is a very old notion. Any Buddhist will tell you that. You know, everything is a story, everything is a concept. So all cultures tell themselves stories about what the world is and who they are and how they relate to the world and each other. And those stories make sense at the time that they're told, and then later on they stop making sense. So if there's a story for post-enlightenment Western industrial society, it's the story of the centrality of humanity to the earth, that we're the most important thing here, we're the central thing, we're the pinnacle of evolution. That gives us the right pretty much to manage and steward the earth. Um, we're separate from everything else, which we call nature. 
which in some way is beneath us. And again, we can either trash it as we like or we can protect it, but it's still basically under our control. I know what you're thinking. You're looking at me and thinking this is my fault. I'm only human. None of this is my fault. Cut me some slack. Stop with the arrogance! You don't even have the facility of language. All you do is bark and moan. It is quite clear that the human-animal distinction is definitional of our culture and that many, many other cultures under the sun do not work with that distinction. Um, uh, and and uh, that is the case for the um, uh, First Nation people the, of the Americas, for the Aborigines, for indigenous people. Progress. Here, you talk about progress over and over again. And where does it lead the Aborigine? It is progress into nothingness. What have the last 200 years brought? Extinction. And where that wasn't radical enough, cultural extermination by the white civilization. Simple outright murder was only part of it. Order. Centrally, we believe in this notion of progress, which is the really big story which is this idea that everything always gets better. It gets materially better, it gets ethically better. You know, the arc of the moral universe bends towards where he, we happen to want it to go at the moment. Um, and that isn't true. And um, what actually happens is that things continue to get better until they don't. And we're at a point now where they're not getting better. For example, um, we've obviously got an ecological collapse on a wide scale, we've got growing inequality. Technology actually, curiously enough, has stalled in lots of areas and not developed uh, in anything like the way that we thought it would. When I grew up, I thought we were all going to be living on Mars by now. So I'm quite disappointed. Um, <laughs> I was looking forward to that. I was looking forward to living on Mars, or at least having holidays there. Um, but it's not going to happen. For as long as I can remember, and for much longer than I've been alive, there have been fantastical promises of technological salvation. And we get them now from Silicon Valley. We hear that we can upload our consciousness into machines so we don't have to live as physical beings or there'll be lab-grown meat for everyone in a few years' time or, or nuclear fission, I believe, is still around the corner any minute now. Um, hyper solar power, etc., etc. None of it ever quite comes to pass. It's always something that's just around the corner that we have to keep progressing towards. It's a salvational narrative. It's like it really feels like a, a narrative of religious salvation, like we will get you to heaven. It's like the narrative of colonizing Mars. Um, it's a psychotic narrative, that one, as far as I'm concerned. It's psychopathic. The notion that it's, well, we've, we've killed off the only living planet that we know of in the entire universe, never mind. We'll go and somehow rustle up another one out of some dead dust, if it were even physically possible, which it isn't. You've still got the same problems in terms of the world that you're eating. Um, the amount that you're consuming, the values that you have, uh, the individualism, the, the kind of digital narcissism that we have as a culture. It's just a little camera shy or something like that. Bailey, look at the camera. Look at the camera. Look at the camera. Look at the camera. Say hi. Look at the face. So cute. So cute. So cute. We are not trained to ask ourselves the question, what kind of a species are we? What gives us the right to dominate, to rape and loot and steal from every other living species? Why have we given ourselves as humans the right to access the bodies of all other species? They're all there for us in human exceptionalism. Now, we really need to think the possibility that maybe a different type of measure of all things is coming up. <laughs> and this measure of all things would have non-humans as a very powerful indicator of what is happening uh, to us. The, the story of progress, the story of human centrality, all of this stuff, is, it's important to challenge it. And the stories we need to tell, in my view, and as I say, it's something everyone can think about themselves, um, are, are actually very old ones. 
I, I think when I started Dark Mountain, I had this slightly arrogant notion that we needed to create new stories, but we don't really because they're all there. And most traditional cultures have told them for a long time. Um, the stories of, of, of our connection to the rest of the world and our part of being part of a web rather than sitting at the top of a peak. Stories of humility in the face of the natural world. Stories of uh, the importance of not taking more than you can. Stories of community. Stories of rootedness. Stories of, of um, almost religious stories that see the world or, or the natural world at least as part of a sacred web that we're part of. All of these things that we basically threw in the dustbin so that we could be enlightened individuals. We need to probably take out and start dusting down again and saying, well, maybe we were telling these stories for thousands of years for a reason. Uh, and maybe, you know, science and technology haven't actually rendered them all irrelevant. Perhaps it's time to start looking again at what we seem to have forgotten. Aquí es la gloria. Agua es vida. ¿No? Tanta despreciamos el agua. ¿Cuál es más caro, el oro o el agua? ¿Eh? El oro. Hombre, tiene que ser el agua. Charquitos. Estos charquitos son los que salvaron a los, pa los patitos. Que no fuera esto... We've stopped speaking to everything else that lives and we just speak to ourselves. And we think it's progress. And it's not progress, it's a great breakage. What would the world would look like if you told a story that wasn't about endless human progress, didn't have humans right at the heart of everything, and wasn't just about people? What other stories would you be telling? It, it's you know humans are humans are really good at solving short-term problems but not long ones not long-term ones so we don't really ever sit down and think oh we've gone the wrong way we'll reverse it in a rational in a rational way and go in another direction it never works like that we just keep trying things until they don't work and then we panic and try something else um and sometimes we get out of the mess and sometimes we don't so i think that we're kind of in that position again on a global scale You generation of politicians who put this out there, you guys, um, maybe you can do better than the baby boomers did on this. We did try, we really did try, um, uh, not hard enough. Um, we don't have a whole lot of time, but we can do it. <laughs>